AI integration, of course, and robotics reshaping businesses by streamlining operations, boosting efficiency, and fostering innovation. Automation, you know, it minimizes errors, cuts costs, while AI-driven insights empower data-driven uh, decision-making. And we've got some of this going on here in Nigeria. The co-founder and CEO of Awari, a startup that is enabling the development and uh, adoption of AI in Nigeria, is here. Silas Adekunle, and good morning to you. Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so, um, you know, tell us about what you're doing here in Nigeria, because I understand that you've got actual software programmers working on AI yeah, and robotics. Yeah, that, that, that's what we're working on. So, our worry is set up as a full-stack AI company here in Nigeria. What we mean by that is right from the foundation, because data is the most important thing. So, we have teams of data scientists actually preparing data, making sure it's clean. In the middle, we then have engineers actually building models based on Nigerian data, which we can talk a bit more about, so that they can then provide services to global companies as well as companies in Nigeria, so that we can actually start to get some of that uh, um, income coming into Nigeria, increasing li uh, uh, better livelihood here, also developing the ecosystem to ensure that we don't get left behind. What kind of data? So the global companies that you're shipping this mm -hmm. data out to depend on that data mm -hmm. in order to make decisions mm -hmm. about the, the initial. So what kind of data yeah. are we talking about? So we're talking visual data. So everything from life sciences companies that are actually looking to improve their product all the way to in Nigeria. One of our own projects is actually, and this is going to be the largest and the first, large language model for Nigerian languages. So everything from the most popular languages so that businesses in Nigeria eventually can also start benefiting some, from some of the work that we're doing. You know, every time I chat with somebody who leaves Nigeria and mm -hmm. I type Jackpa on my on WhatsApp, right, <laughs> I put a logo of a plane. <laughs> and I would imagine that sometime in the future, I just have to say it or type Jackpa mm -hmm. and a plane just shows up. So is that, I mean, that's more slang. Well, Jackpa is Yoruba. So exactly. is that where you're going? That's exactly it. Because most technology that's developed right now is developed in other countries and they are primarily done for the English language. Whereas we need to make sure that technology is built in a way that's relevant to Nigeria, to the yeah. Nigerian culture, to the way of life of Nigerian people. So we, you know, today more than ever, you know, we've, uh, we've been playing a lot of catch up. But right now we actually have the opportunity to be in the game if we move fast enough and make sure that we don't get left behind and we can get some of the, reap some of the benefits of artificial intelligence technology as well. Now, that's a lot of languages. Nigeria's mm -hmm. got, so you're trying yeah. to encompass everything? Oh, I mean, we're starting, we're going to take baby steps first. So we're going to start with the you know, initial most popular languages of which, uh, you know, Pidgin English, Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo, you know, uh, um, uh, Ibibio, Efik, you know, so the core languages initially, you know, uh, um, and then we start to expand from there. Because again, this takes resources. These are burdens that we've taken on ourselves. you know, so commitments as a company, because if, if we don't do it, no one else is going to do it, or we'll leave it to other people to come into the country and start to build these technologies for us. Um, you know, we, we, we spoke with the um, ICT minister, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Boson Tijani, while mm -hmm. we're in Davos, yeah, mm -hmm. and w w there's the conversation okay. around AI and whether or not we're jumping the gun because, you know, there's a data stat I keep throwing out, 60% of Nigerians mm -hmm. on 2G, mm -hmm. about 0 0.8 on 5G. With the infrastructure challenges, can we, can we walk and chew gum at the same time? Can you be I, doing this while we're saying we don't have lights I, and all these things? I, I think we need to develop infrastructure in parallel as we are also building for the future. There are other countries that have done it recently. If you look at China, for example, AI really at the front of mind, but also they've built up, and that's what helps you to actually enable to get more people into the middle class as well, so you can build up your own internal economy. We can't um, afford to wait because technology doesn't slow down. And you know, the reality of the situation is if you look at other countries, technology is incremental. So what they've done is over time, They've laid really strong data foundations, and then they've built better algorithms on top, and now we have you know, generative AI, large language models, all of these frontier technology. We as a country need to work on infrastructure in parallel as having countries that have a foot in, uh, companies that have a foot in the future at the same time. Now, your background, what's your background? Uh, robotics and artificial intelligence. Now, yeah. your education was overseas, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, you know, and, and I read up about you. I've seen the robot wars and everything you've built. You've brought, you've, you're a very popular person. You've done amazing stuff. How does that translate to the schools here? I mean, what's your take on the schools you've interacted with and you're dealing with? Because you, this has to scale. And, it, yeah. it, it has to scale, right? So, you know, when Awari was set up along with my, my co-founder, um, Eniola, it came from seeing the challenge in the ecosystem, actually. You know, on the one hand, and, and the reason Awari's mission started was from education, actually. That was the first thing we wanted to do. How do we make sure that the future of work is kind of protected for young people? So the first thing we started doing was putting um, robotics into the school uh, education ecosystem. You need to do that in parallel, as well as then starting to look at, you know, we have unemployed graduates right now. 
highly intelligent, unemployed graduates. That's actually a, an unfair advantage that Nigeria has on other countries where people have domain expertise. So when they start transitioning into working with AI, they're not just learning to program, they're bringing those domain knowledge from whatever field they've come from, you know, be it uh, medicine, uh, um, any of their ed education background. We need to start thinking as a country, what are the things that are unique about us that A, allows us to stand out against other countries in the world, but in parallel can allow us to leapfrog some of these uh, challenges that we're facing internally. Well. Um, now, the, can, can you tell us about the talent you're working with? This is talent that's based here, that's been working Yeah, on this it? is talent uh, that's based. Actually, so we, are, we opened our first lab in Ikorodu you know, a few months ago, and, and we already have lots of projects coming in already. About uh, 100 people on the data science, uh, on the data uh, uh, team, about nine people on the engineering team. And the amazing you know, stat there is actually about 85%, 90% of our people are actually from the Ikorodu um, area. Wow. So it's actually about going into communities, building up you know, um, societal infrastructures that is sustainable so that you can have a lot more impact. And, you know, the other thing, you know, the, there has to be credit given to some of the, the work that's done by some of the facilities that exist already. So, for example, in Ikorodu, there's kind of the sale facility where they also laid a strong foundation training people. And that's what we're here to do, really, providing a pathway for people that have, you know, got a bit of knowledge make sure that we give them more training so that they have more relevant skills for the reality of work right now. And then also providing work as well so that there's livelihood so that sustain jobs, yeah. real, real jobs. Okay, but you're, 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 look, great stuff, Awari yourself, but you're one company. What, what can government do? Because there's so many public schools, private schools that are behind. How mm -hmm. do we scale what you're doing? I, I think, yeah, government has a huge part to play in this. And, uh, you know, with the administration uh, right now, you mentioned some of the stuff that the ICT minister was doing. There's the 3MTT in initiative, right? You know, 3 million tech talent. There's a 1 million tech jobs. I think we're, we're thinking in the, right, um, in the right directions. But you're right. It can't just be a worry that's doing this. And a key part of what we're doing and the reason why we've chosen to be at this foundation is how can we enable more of the developer ecosystem so that there can be more a worry, so that there can be more companies that don't have to always go back and you know, do the inefficient work of building up all of the data set. How can we be a pipeline that enables more companies? That's what we're going to need to do, work as a community to, to support each other, to actually scale and move in the same pace that the world is going. What are your thoughts on where AI is going? We're always featuring robots doing mm -hmm. this and the fact that people worry that they will take jobs from human, humans. What, where do you fall in on that debate? Um, I'm, a, I'm an optimist in terms of, I, I don't think you will ever replace the human spirit. And, you know, there's this concern that maybe, you know, artificial general intelligence, let's keep in mind that, you know, AI is dealing with uh, digital information. Humans exist in the real world. And there are so many facets of intelligences when it comes to the real world. Emotional intelligence, how we interact with each other. I think technology is here to enable us to have the best of ourselves, to be able to have more of the best of ourselves. What's going to happen as we start to introduce AI robotics to take on some of the laborious, manual, you know, more difficult parts of work is we'll free up human creativity, the things that we really enjoy doing. You know, we're talking on large scales here, but that is the impact, the promise of technology. Mm -hmm. And so um, as far as 2024 is mm -hmm. concerned, what, what's your outlook for developments in this space here in Nigeria I, and even elsewhere? I think um, globally, you know, generative AI is you know, it's still going to be the big topic. It's going to start finding its way into other fields. For example, you know, uh, ChatGPT, for example, really captured people's imaginations because you could, for the first time, actually talk and interact with artificial intelligence systems in what's called natural language, the way you speak. But of course, that's mostly English. You're going to start seeing the proliferation of that into other countries, like the type of work we're doing here in Nigeria, where people will be able to interact with AI systems in their own languages. On top of that as well, you're going to start seeing it go into other fields. So, for example, it's mostly in media right now. You're actually starting to see it in life sciences. So these are kind of the, the natural developments that we're going to see. Robotics as a whole, as an industry, that's still, there's still a lot of work to do to actually allow robots to do things in the real world in terms of how they move and things like that. But the AI side of it, the data processing, that's going to keep accelerating. Hey, man, you are doing great work. We, we thank you for taking the time to join us. And, you know, shout out to the skills in, in, in Ikorodu and, uh, and elsewhere and for you validating what they're, what they're able to do. Thank you very much. Uh, Silas uh, Adekunle, co-founder and CEO of Owari, thank you so much for the time. Thank you very much.